working. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to actually cover the ECG side of testing. I'm going to use the BC test equipment for this. Uh, this is for the performance checking of the ECG. This We'll actually do this in the next video. So I might reference that and I'll put these online as part one and part two. In the first part, what I'd like to do though is I'd like to just focus on the electrical safety side of things. And if I may, I'm going to do these checks with the device off. The reason being is because the second I turn on the medical monitor here, it's going to start screaming <laughs> because it doesn't have a signal and it's not happy with things. And so, um, What you're going to need to do when you do electrical safety is you're going to need to hook up the ECG uh, connection here. Now please don't forget, you remember that uh, area where they say system components? This is a system component. It should have a number on it, a barcode number. You can see it there, right? Please make a note of the system component that you're testing with the monitor. The monitor's barcode is up on top. So I'm going to just sort of put the monitor off the side. The center stage we're going to take uh, here with the, uh, with the, uh, <clears throat> the electrical safety analyzer. So what I've got here is I've got the Kelvin cable hooked up there again to external. I've got it plugged on to a ground plug on the back of the device. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to start over with our uh, electrical safety. Uh, there's the incoming line voltage. What I did is I've got it on mains voltage right up top here. And I'm just literally going to go right down all of these. So there's the current that the device is using. is actually using a tenth of an amp. I'm going to continue on. Notice that's earth resistance. Uh, I must not have it well connected. Doop, doop, doop. Tell me I'm not on the wrong one. I'm on the wrong one. Okay. Yeah, if you notice that, just move it over. It's okay. Uh, this is actually a much higher resistance than what I was getting previously. What I was getting previously was much lower, but it's still passing. We're under 0.5, so I'm going to move on. I'm going to go over here. This is their, our earth leakage. Now, notice this is not using my Kelvin cable because I just disconnected my Kelvin cable. So what I want to do is I want to use the chassis leakage. This is the one where we're going to open the ground and it's going to give us a measurement. Notice how high this one has for uh, chassis leakage. This is given 300. This is in microamps. It should be right up here. Microamps. I don't know if you can barely see that. I can see that the reflection of the light's really messing with us. <clears throat> so, microamps and I hold this down and I've got 190 microamps. Characteristic of these space labs is they really do have a high amount of leakage current from the power supply. <clears throat> and that has to do with the type of power supply they're using. So this is just a real quick review of a standard electrical safety. And you all have been doing this throughout the semester quite a lot, right? But here's what you haven't been doing. The next tests are lead to earth, lead to lead, lead isolation. So those are going to be the primary focus of what we're doing here. The lead to earth, lead to lead, lead isolation. <clears throat> so first thing here, what you want to do is you want to plug up your uh, ECG cable to the monitor. You should have a three or five lead extension. I think most of what we're using here are three lead. But five lead and even 12 lead uh, test pretty much the same. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to just hook up my leads to no particular order in the first three. Right? So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go down to lead to earth. And what this is doing here is this is looking at the actual leakage uh, coming through these plugs through what would be the patient's chest going to a known earth connector. Right? So in the event that my ground was open, this is what would go through the patient. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to hit these two, you can barely see that there, these two um, buttons here to cycle through the lead as necessary and I can see my fingers are getting in the way. <clears throat> First one I'm going to work on is lead one. 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open the ground and it shows here three, four. That's pretty high actually. With the ground intact, it's one. With the ground intact, the tolerance for passing is 10 microamps. Uh, with the ground open is 50. You want to check it uh, usually with the device on, but like I say, I'm testing this with the device off to not have it scream at us the whole time, right? Uh, the alarms will happen uh, with it on. So <clears throat> I'm going to move over to two, and I'm essentially going to repeat, repeat the same test. Notice here I get four. This is the highest I saw. Four. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit this button until they all light up. What it's going to do now is it's going to evaluate all of the leads. So I'm going to lift that and you can see that the biggest number there is four. So I don't know if you can see that very well. I can see it on my screen. I'm sort of hoping you can see it on your screen or the play, play, playback will help. Uh, yes, sir. You said the lead should have no more than 10 microamps? 10 with the ground connected, 50 with the ground open and that is the passing measurement. <clears throat> the next one is lead to lead. What it's going to do with lead to lead is it's going to compare the device operational between each one of these leads. Does this, when it's on a patient's chest, give an electrical current across the patient? And unfortunately the answer is yes it does, uh, just not a lot. So let's figure out what that is. What we're going to do here is we're going to toggle through all of the measurements. Then I'm going to lift the ground. I'm going to toggle through all the measurements. You'll find at this point often testers will not allow you to select all. Right? They want you to go individually and compare each one. While we were going individually with the ground open, did anyone see anything other than one? Okay, so one would be the maximum. And I don't see anything bigger here by toggling through it with the ground intact. So if we're just <clears throat> good ground, good ground, it's one? Uh, if you have a, uh, a intact ground, there again, it's the 10 and the 50. Okay, so it's <clears throat> Here's uh, the last test. Now this is where you have to be very careful. Lead isolation. If there was a catastrophic short in the device, is there a real connection between ground and the patient? Let's say this device does actually short out to, to the ECG wires. I'm going to electrocute the patient, aren't I? So what we've got here is we've got what's called an isolation transformer. It's a one-to-one -one transformer. It pretty much just makes sure that the, the patient signal uh, has no real connection to the circuit that's doing the detection. I've actually seen independent floating power supplies with uh, an optical connection. See, now, if the other side of the optical connection shorts, that doesn't matter, right? Because the linkage is light. So that's a really good way to isolate your patient. And that's a very popular way to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to check that isolation. Now, it's hard for us to set the fault condition here. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the fault condition here. We're going to give it 120 volts on the leads. Please do not have your hand on these leads when you touch this button, which is right behind here, which says high voltage ISO test. ISO test is literally going to apply that voltage. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and make sure your ground is intact. Do not remove the ground. We want to see what happens in a grounded condition for this test. This is a great example why you start with your ground conditions, by the way, because notice all these tests that had to have the ground intact, they would all be off. I can guarantee you on a stand that if your ground measurement is off, this test will not be accurate. Okay? <clears throat> so what I'm going to do here simply is I'm going to test, push this ISO test button. Notice my measurement went up to 17. That is uh, from this pin, these pins, which now have 120 volt AC on them, through this monitor. That would be what would go through a patient in the event that there was a catastrophic failure. 
17 micro. So we're well within passing on all of this, right? That is how you perform electrical safety on a uh, ECG system. Notice that instead of two tests for the standard uh, ECG, this one has five tests. Okay?